Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SK beat. We're kicking. Just kicking. Just kicking. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of why you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can can and a can can, a can can, a can can, and a wheel. Now we're off to. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the channel. And you know, today was Sherry Shepard's opening of her show, The Sherry Show. And I caught a little bit of it. Um, I know she had Candy Burris on there. And, of course, you know, Candy came up there with her nice figure, her nice body. Body, 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 legs, hips, and body, body, body. You know that, that little phrase she gave us, okay? She had on some kind of earthy tone brown. And it really looked good on her. But I thought it was kind of cool in New York. Uh, around this time. Anybody from New York on the families? Tell me, is it cool up there at this time of the year? Let us just know. But uh, Todd was with her. He was being a gentleman, playing his role, making sure his wife got out the, um, what do you call it, the limo, van, not van, um, I guess, escort. Well, I don't know what it was. Like a truck style. <clears throat> like a suburban, really. But yes. They got to and fro. Hopefully she's back home safe and sound. <laughs> safe and sound. Or she might still be in New York just uh, catching in uh, the atmosphere. I, I don't know. I don't know what she's doing up there. But I know she went to the Sherry Show this morning and showed up and showed out. It was so funny. I was like, okay, okay, I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. But I did not like the setup of her show. Like the colors. Um... Uh, her background, it, it kind of, it kind of felt earthy tone, but not sherry. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I didn't want them to give us uh, anything in the midst of. Uh, let me see. I didn't want to get anything such as, um, you know, us uh, appearance of getting windy, because in a sense, it still looked it like windy show. The setup part. But, I don't know. I don't know. Because it's kind of giving me windy tease. But I was like, okay, okay. May, maybe it'll give us something a little bit more than that. I don't know. I don't know how her show going to end up. But she, um, how can I say it? Uh, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know what can I how can I say it? it that's the that's the setup right there. It was just bland and boring. Y'all see what I'm talking about? It was no like pop, you know, like that's cherry. It should have been like a fuchsia, purple, and maybe some blues and yellows mixed up in there. Uh, but see that's so plain, ain't it? I'm like and that that rug giving me a headache. Like I'm out in Mars somewhere. I'm, I'm traveling to another planet. So, like I said, I don't know. Maybe they don't think Sherry's going to last long or whatever. Or the view's not going to be there. And who knows, you know. Um, everything is just new. And it's fun for her. And she definitely knows how to entertain. But I like, oh, she has had something. She was covering, um, shit, I don't forgot the man's name. Um, it's an actor. Um, was it Clooney? I don't think it was Clooney. But it was somebody. And he was uh, held to not kiss well. And Sherry blasting the man out. Come on, uh, you come on over to the show and we'll, we'll uh, have a test run to see can you kiss. I'm like, wait a minute, Sherry. Now. Okay, you, you you starting off on the good foot and you start off on the bad foot. Because <clears throat> this is hearsay now. And I guess this is what gossip is, okay? Uh, but she just, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at a loss. I, I only saw like maybe 15 minutes of the show. But I do know she was um, saying something about one person didn't couldn't kiss or something like that. And she was just dropping tea on this man. And I was like, that's kind of damn embarrassing to be on television talking about him and he can't kiss. I said, oh, no, I don't know. I don't know. 
know. I said, I just really don't know. But you suppose had Kim Whitley and Candy Burris as her first two people she wanted to interview. And from how she was saying, Kim Whitley and her were just out on the town uh, trying to tell everybody about <coughs> the, sh uh, the show and wanting them to tune in. So I guess if we want her ratings to go up, we need to <coughs> definitely try to support her. Um, but it was funny. It was really funny, honey. Trying to see if I can get a, um, a little snippet of her and Candace interview. I'm an Emmy winning for a uh, former co-host of The View. And, uh, but a lot of people, I'm also, I'm a mother, I'm a girlfriend, I'm the girl next door that just happens to be living her dream because I'm hosting my own talk show. <laughs> what? What? So I want to say something that the pastor always says. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, dreams do come true? Dreams do come true. All right. Now, you guys, back in uh, 2016, a few years after I left The View, my executive producer, John Murray, we started taking meetings together, and we would tell anybody who would listen that I wanted my own talk show. And so six years later, here I am. I am. I can't believe it. But she got it on the downfall of Whitney. I mean, not Whitney, Lord. Wendy Williams. So I, I don't know. I mean, I guess you can <clears throat> pray for something and you get it unexpectedly. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Some just don't feel cool about this situation. Uh, and then she goes on to talk about uh, Oprah had called her and she didn't know if that was the real Oprah or the fake Oprah. And she took 15 pages of uh, notes that Oprah had given her uh, advice, advice on how to uh, maneuver through her show. And it seemed like she was kind of like um, shy or a little bit nervous, you can say. <clears throat> and um, I'm like, well, how can she be nervous? Because she was up there. But well, I guess it was Wendy's show. And she could care a, a, a hell of a beans about it. And, you know, she just had to make sure everything went smooth and, you know, everything was on time and it ended on time. But I guess when you have your own show and you're trying to convince these people that you're likable, you're talented, and you can zoom in on any type of uh, breaking, trending news and, you know, you could gossip about it just like Wendy, if not better. But, um... Uh, like I said, I, I I don't know. I'm still on the fence. I'm going to try to look at it each day for the one week. And then I'll be pretty sure knowing whether I'm going to tune in, you know, for its entirety. Because I like Sherry. I mean, Sherry's played on a lot of different things. And, you know, she was on The View. And I got to watch. I kind of watched her grow there and put her political views in order or in check for us to let us know exactly how she felt about whatever they were discussing politically. <coughs> and, uh, you know, she could crack a joke here and there. Some of them are not that funny, you know, but I, I, I understood what she was going with it. And she just had a chipper spirit. So I do see this in her show. But like I said, the setup is just so bland. I mean, why would you give her a beige chair? You know, I, I don't know. It's like they could have did another setup where it wasn't like, you know, the purple chair and Wendy. Like, she, maybe she could have had, like, a, I don't know, a bar stool and something where she could lean on, like a table, like the view, but it'd be hyped up a little bit. Um, I don't know. I just, it seems it's just giving me Wendy's tease set up. You know what I'm saying? Because she's talking about she got all her wigs and... I really thought that Norman was going to be her sidekick. But, I mean, I read something that's saying he had got replaced by somebody else. And I don't see Suzanne there. And I was like, okay, okay. I like Norman better. I like Norman better. I wish it could have worked out where 
he was basically, you know, doing her, co-hosting with her. But I guess they didn't want anything resembling Wendy's old crew, Wendy's old uh, setup, background, and all like that. So we could get Sherry, her moment in the sun. But I'm like, well, you know, hey, it ain't too much you can pretty much uh, do about a talk show host having guests. The only thing that makes it different from the Tamron Hall show, Cameron coming with facts. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She coming with facts and she's interviewing people trying to get their take on it. Because she's a true journalist. But Sherry, you know, she's going to take over Wendy's job. Wendy's job where you talked about people. Even your own best friend or people that ran in your circle. You know, and that's why Wendy, that's a hard. She couldn't have no real friends because she alienated, alienated all her friends. Uh, and told their business. And so, you know, some people say it's karma. And that may be a little bit of it. But, you know, if you out there doing shit. And she that's her platform is to talk about shit. Then, you know, what you gonna do? You gotta get on up into the shit. And see what really stinks, okay? And that's how she got her money. But we see the downside in that as well. Um, but let's get into um, what Candy Burris was there and she was trying to talk a little bit about you know she'd been the first one to come help her friend share out which you know she enjoyed coming and she'll probably come back again but um with you know let's listen to it this is the epitome of a woman making boss moves she shook up broadway she's a grammy winning songwriter and the longest running real housewife of atlanta please welcome the lady boss herself candy burris tucker <laughs> You look amazing. Thank you. I said I'm coming to see Sherry, girl. And I, I get it together. And I am loving everything Thank about you. you. And, and I'm so excited because Candy brought me some gifts from her line. Your line is called Bedroom Candy. And, and I would open them right now, but they would cancel the show. So Yeah, I don't want you to do that. This is great because I'm always telling you that I'm running out of my batteries. Right. So this is great. I had to I bring you a new, a new stash. Yeah, Ben, thank you for my stash, girl. <laughs> Let me tell you, you are looking like money right oh, here. You yeah. can't be trying to pull it together, you know. And pull together it is. And I love you because speaking of Monday, you coined the term, the phrase money making Mondays that plays all the time. Everybody uses it. How did that come about? Oh my gosh, it's funny. I think I was, I actually was in New York at uh -huh. the time and um, somebody had said something negative and I was like, you know what? It's money making Monday. I'm not gonna let them, you know, hate on me. I'm, I'm making my money. It's money making Monday. <laughs> You know, like, why am I worried about you? It's Money Making Monday. You know what I have to say I admire so much about you because when I say boss, everything you think of is in an entrepreneurial way. Like, I've been to your dungeon party. And this, you know, literally, and Candy has the dungeon party. You and Todd, your husband, are executive producers, where we get to come in various states of dress. You strippers, this exotic dancers, and we just get to have a good time. But this came from a, a conflict yes. on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Everything, your bedroom candy. Like, what is in your mind that you always think of something as a business? You plays and musicals and... You know, it's it's funny that you say that. I mean, I don't know. It's just a thing. It's like, you know, I feel like we love things that we people can relate to, right? right. And um, so I always try to do things that... It puts me in a creative zone uh -huh. when I'm in situations. Yes. So like what you said with the dungeon party, it just came because it was a situation that I was in. And overall, I don't want to be broke, girl. <laughs> I don't want to be broke. I know that's right. I was a teenager when I first got into the business. And you always hear those stories of teen stars that, you know, end up, you know, Yeah, you're a single broke. mom. Yeah, and I yeah. didn't, didn't want to be broke. You know, I didn't want to be one of those stories that you hear that people would be like, and what happened to them? You, know? you are not broke. As a matter of fact, not only are you not broke, you are working towards an EGOT because you are executive producing The Piano Man. With Piano Lesson. Piano Lesson. Yes. With 
Samuel Jackson, John David Washington, and Danielle Brooks. Like, what does it feel like to be the executive producer of this? What? Girl. Okay, first of all, um, well, shout out to my husband, Todd. Todd We're both Tucker executive in the house. On this show. We're both executive part of the producing team yes. of um, the piano lesson. And it's just an amazing feeling because, first of all, um, August Wilson created yes. the show. And he, you know, he was an amazing, you know, award-winning um, creative person. Yes. And just to be able to be a part of something was so great. The people that I've been looking up to forever... But this you know? is not only, this is like, you, you also produced uh, Thoughts of a Colored Man, which I yes. went to see, and it was amazing. So this is your second time. But let me tell you something. You are working, this, it may put you up there in EGOT status. I'm so, I'm so excited. I just want to know how you, because I want to, I got an Emmy, but I want to know how you go get the GOT. That's like, <laughs> Okay, the G is a Grammy. I already have that. You have the Grammy. Yeah. So the O is an Oscar. Okay, so we're about to we we working towards that. Yeah, we're gonna keep working. We're gonna keep working towards that. And the T, T is the Tony. Is the award. Tony. And that you have to be doing something with Broadway. You know? Okay, with Broadway. Okay, I'm gonna have to get in behind you and Todd. You know, when you do your thing. <laughs> now, are right, you got? Okay, so we can get this Emmy. Teamwork you, makes dreams work. Makes dreams yeah. work. Okay. okay. Now, people do not know this. You're, you are a studied actress. You've gone to school to be an actress, and you play the part on The Shy. You are a villain on The Shy, which just got picked up for another season. Yes. Candy, yes. I did not know you would be a villain. How does that feel? I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I mean, because the thing about it is, um, for a long time, you know, when you've been on a show like The Real Housewives for as many years as yeah. people just start putting you in the box of being a reality star. Yes. And I really wanted people to see, like, no, your girl can act for <laughs> real. <laughs> and so I want to say thank you to Lena Waithe and the whole team of The Shy for, you know, even, you know, recognizing me and my talent. You know, I auditioned just like anybody else. I didn't. They didn't just give me the part. I auditioned. Yeah. And um, yes, I you know Rosalind, she's you she's are bringing it. She brings the drama. You scare me because I'm so used to you smiling. You don't smile, and when you smile, no. there's something behind it. Like I'm gonna it's get you. There's something behind it, and and I'm glad you see that. It's like for me, and when I try to think of who Rosalind is, Rosalind is very stoic. Yeah. She's always plotting. Yeah, I can see. So there's guy. plotting and everything she's thinking and and her moves and even when she smiles, like you said, it's just. A, yeah, like I'm getting scared right now. This, this, this get out of that. Get out it's of that. Different. Candy. It's different. You know, Candy's like, eh. not Rosalind. Okay, this yeah. is nice. Different. Uh, this is really nice. Y'all gotta watch. It just got picked up the shy for another season. Season we, six. Season six. Yeah, season six. Now, Riley who is your oldest daughter, because you have Blaze and you have, you have uh, Ace. Riley just turned 20 years old. Look at yes. this mama. I remember her when she was little. Yes. 20 years old. Mm -hmm. How does she feel about turning 20? How do you feel about her turning 20? Ooh, child, OK, first of all, you know, she's grown, grown now. Yes. And she does not like people telling her age, because, you know, Why? she's not quite grown enough, uh -huh. and she still likes to go to the club. Okay, oh, okay. So if you see in the street, don't embarrass her now. Just let her go and have Just her fun. Her you know, she's doing good. She's at, still at NYU. She's yes. a junior this year. Yes. She's managing an artist. She is. Yes, you know, she's in music business. Um, yes. That's what she's studying in school, and she's also um, interning at a record label. So she decided that she wanted to manage an artist like me, because I, I managed an artist when, when I was 19. Up. Okay, so are you going to let her be your lawyer? Yeah, when she <laughs> That's she's she actually interned at my lawyer's office before. All right, well, go ahead, Miss Riley. And then you have Tucker, you have, you have Ace, and you have Blaze. Yes, and Kayla. And Kayla, oh yes. my gosh, and you're a mother, and you're still doing everything. And I want to say give a shout out to Todd Tucker, the husband. He is right here, the amazing, amazing husband of Candy Burris Tucker. Yes. Todd, I know that's right, Todd. Now we got to talk housewives because I love you in the the housewives. Now the part one of the reunion aired last night. Okay, <laughs> tell me what we can expect, girl. It's been it's been a lot of drama. Uh, <laughs> lots of drama. Okay, so first of all, okay, y'all, did y'all watch the show last night? I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah. Those girls are in their feelings about they what are. I say on Speak on It, honey. 
So Speak On It is my yes. YouTube show where I comment, you know, do my You're commentary right. about the show mm -hmm. and stuff. And I, when I tell you, they kept talking about, or ref, you know, referring to some things that I said on Speak On It. And I just felt like, well, you know, y'all were dogging me the entire the season. The entire time. The entire yes. season. And then certain people, Sheree, <laughs> tried to act like she didn't remember saying anything about me. Yes. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. No. So that, and then um, I... Marlo gave a whole pity party she at the did. end of the show. Like, I, you know what, Candy? This the whole is, speech, honey. The whole I speech. started to break her up with a speech because I tell, I could tell she rehearsed it. But I said, no, nah, I'm going to let her get it off. <laughs> let her go. <laughs> and then let her be great on it. Yeah. Candy, and now y'all know this about Candy. Like, you have started out this show. You started out Housewives. You were always sweet. You always had joy. And even now being the longest running um, housewife, you still have that joy. You still have it. I don't, I don't, like, I, ha I give my flowers to you because you. it's never left. No matter what happens. We can't let them steal our joy, can we? We cannot let them steal our joy. Girl, up next, Candy and I are challenging each other to guess the celebrity BFFs. I don't want you to miss it. I'm so glad you came on, my friend. Yes, I love I'm so you. Glad. friends from the audience and we are going to test their knowledge on celebrity BFF. So I am playing with DJ. Yes. All right. And Candy, you're going to be playing with Todd. All right. So, all right. Don't get That's any ideas. Winning team. Okay, yeah. there you go. A winning team. So we each are going to have 30 seconds to give our partners clues on a pair of famous best friends. We're going to go first. Candy, you and Todd go over to the side. Okay, and that's a guy Todd, Todd, not her husband Todd. But, okay. All right. So here we go. 30 seconds on the clock. Okay. All right. So it's uh, she had her own talk show. Uh, she talks like this, and her best friend also has a show on CBS. And she talks like this. You get a car. You get a car. Gail. Gail and, Dobra. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. Second. Okay. He's an actor and he's a comedian. He's really short and he he and he talks like this. and he's been in movies. Ride Along too. And it's Kevin Hart and, 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 uh, and, and The Rock. Guy. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Oh, so this girl, she, she's standing right behind me. She's got a lot of sex toys that are amazing. <laughs> What? That was it. <laughs> what were you thinking you were gonna say? Were you, you candy? Candy, candy. Bro. well that's all we need. Can I get that point? <laughs> all right, so come on over here. So Candy and Todd. We're here. You, you are over there. Great. Let's see if you can beat me. Going over there, Todd. All right, all right Todd. Let's do this. Let's do this. Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right, so 30 seconds. 30 seconds on the clock. All right. Okay. Tell me when to go. Go. Okay. They have a show together cooking amazing dishes. He's a rapper. <laughs> 50 Cent and Martha Stewart. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, Martha Stewart. And, and he's a... Uh, I'm going to pass that one. Great. Oh, my God. Pass. Okay. He's the king of Bravo. Yes. And then Andy Cohen. Yes. And, and ooh, AC. Ooh, they both AC. White uh, hair. AC. Uh, uh, Anderson yeah. Cooper. Yes, yes, yes. DJ, you're going home with a $250 cash gift card. It's hot. For coming in second, we have a special gift card for you as well. I want to thank you both. You guys catch Candy on part two of the Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion this Sunday at AM Bravo. Up next, see what happens when Kim Whitley and I hit the streets of New York. Keep it here. You are amazing. Sherry, it's Garcelle. Let me tell you how happy I am that you have your own talk show. I know it's been on your bucket list. I know it's a dream come true. I am so proud of you. I love you so much. And I can't wait to see you September 12th. Girl, you're going to kill it. I know it. I love you. Bye. So that was cute. She had this like, you know, guess what? It, it could be and all that kind of stuff. So that was a, a new twist that I guess um, we didn't have on the Wendy show. So I don't know if she keep up with this, uh, what do you call it, bubbly type attitude. And she gets younger guests that are out there doing their thing. 
I think she could pull it off because I enjoyed it and I wanted to uh, actually sit down and, you know, hear it at the first time when I'm giving it to you all. So I didn't, I didn't see it. I just like, okay, this person did it real good. So it had the entire time when Candy was there. And, it, you know, she gave a lot of information and about what she was doing, how she was going to get uh, started or going to really be like, um, how you can say, she's transforming herself from, in a sense, she's not saying it, but I'm going to say it. She's transferring herself to get off of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. She, uh, but, you know, as much as she can get that ratchet money, she's going to get it to continue to build on what she's trying to do, which is to become a renowned actress, you know, in the world of Hollywood, you know. And uh, I see what she's doing. I, I'm like, go for it, girl. Go for it. But you're going to have to take that leap of faith and, you know, go on and, you know, head first, uh, steadfast, Godspeed type of uh, mentality. Because you can always say you're going to be at the Real Housewives of Atlanta, but that show is not going to last, you know, forever. You know, you've been on it, what, 13, 14 years? You know, I know the money's good, and maybe you're going to try to stay on it until Riley get out of college. And I think I would, too. <laughs> and be like, baby, if you're going to need anything else, you're going to get it on your own. And I like it that um, Candy's lawyer is letting her intern, and then she's actually managing a uh, new artist. That's cute. It kind of reminded me of, what was that um, show where it was two sisters? They were... Not by the same mama, but the same daddy. And what was her name? It was, was it Monica? Oh, I can't remember. But, you know, it, the one that played um, Smart Guy. You remember the, the girl that played on Smart Guy? And was it Mona? I think it was Mona. And uh, I forget what it was called. Family, help me out there in the, uh, in the comment section. If y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, it kind of remind me of, in the frame of mind, that's what Riley's doing. Um, trying to get with artists, trying to develop them and all that kind of stuff. Because she's in the entertainment field. So, I was like, damn. What was that show called with Mona? Sean? Huh? Half Sisters? That, that's what it was called. Okay, my daughter said it was called Half Sisters. But, I mean, um, what was it? <laughs> the girl who played in Smart Guy. Uh, what was the girl name that played? Uh, Yvette. Yeah, Yvette. It was Yvette and Mona. And Yvette's mom was just hilarious. <laughs> she was hilarious. Can't think of her name. Uh, I don't think she's acting too much nowadays. Or maybe she's doing plays and I'm just not, you know, uh, hearing about her. But, and then you had the one that played in, oh, shoot, uh, Family Matters. You remember the sister? That was there with uh, uh, Harriet and uh, Carl Winslow. They, she had a sister, a sister-in-law. She was uh, playing as Mona's mom. So it was a trip. And I, I really liked it that. But that's where they're going with this. So Candy, keep doing the, your good work. Keep shining, honey. And getting what you need to get. Because I'm telling you, uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta ain't going to be here that much longer now. Because, you know, we're going to get tired of it. We're going to like, y'all ain't excusing some people after five or six years, you know, and, and making it fresh every five or six years with new cast. I don't, I just don't know because we're going to get tired of seeing them. Just like we got tired of Cynthia. Just like we got tired of, uh, well, Kim Fields didn't have no reason to be there in the first place. I guess she just wanted a little pocket change, a little money, you know, something like that. Uh, but let me see. Yeah. And Kenya, you know, she's trying other things. She's getting into challenges and stuff. Trying to test her wits and will of her stamina. And, uh, I like that. And that gonna open more doors for Kenya to, uh, you know, do other things that she wanted to do as well. And not just on, you know, some sitcoms, but something stable. But, um, I don't know. She probably can, uh, uh, what do you call it? Bump, not bump heads, but brain, uh, what do you call it? Brain, not brain teaser, brainstorm. That's what I was trying to say. Maybe they can brainstorm and probably get their own show together, you know? Uh, Kenya and Candy, you know, best friends, moved out to, say, Hollywood. 
you know, if I can give some ideas and y'all know I said it first, uh, tell Todd and, and Candy to cut me my check. Tell Todd and Candy to cut me my check. Because I could see them being like friends, you know what I'm saying? Something like, you know, living single is on with Queen Latifah. Um, I mean, you know, the world is possibilities for everything and for everybody. But you can't stay and be complacent and, and uh, you know, dragging your heels on what if, what if that happened, what if this happened. You just got to jump out there, Candy. You just got to jump on out there, girl. But uh, I liked it how Sherry had um, put Todd up there with Candy and, and, and acknowledging him. And I'm sure he felt very good about that. Uh, so that's why I said I think Sherry going to do good. But like I said, she got to have the young people out there that are doing things. Like she might want to have Chris Brown on there. Um, let me see who else. Uh, Kenny G for the old folk. You know, season folk. Um, I don't know about Keith Sweat. Ugh, I, I thought his name came to my brain. But I don't know if we want to see him. But you know, some old uh, rhythm and blues type cats that was out there in the 80s and the 90s doing their thing. Uh, you know, just have a plethora of people, and and you know, shit, get Ellen on your show. I think you were on her show one time. Tell Ellen come on and return the table, and uh, uh, see what she doing. Talk about her uh, friend that died. You know, the Hesh woman. How she felt about that? Get, get, hey, we want some news. We can use Sherry. So that's all I got, guys. That's all I got. I was excited, and I was excited for her first guest to be Candy Burris. And um, you sh it's like he, she should have brought Todd Tucker up there on stage too, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he could have talked a little about the projects that they're working on. You know, give him a little, you know, some something. But um, I, I just like how Sherry had included him where most people, they'll just talk about him, but they won't, like, acknowledge him in the crowd and stuff of that nature. So I was glad she did all that for Candy. And, uh, and Todd, like I said, he was smiling like a Cheshire cat. I was like, look at them. Just look at them. <laughs> I said, where the hell Mama Joyce at? Where is Mama Joyce at? Oh, child. Because she used to go with Candy a lot, you know, to different um, shows she was going to be premiering on or, or, or whatever uh, with her group and stuff of that nature. And now, you know, Todd said, he going. Mama Joyce going to take a bad seat, shit. And I was like, okay, as long as y'all don't be fighting Mama Joyce over there now. You know, me telling Mama Joyce she can't go all the time now. Because we need Mama Joyce to be on them streets sometimes, too. So she can give us the real tea. <laughs> but that's all I have for this video, guys. Like it, little guy. to have more. Like I said, I'll be watching Sherry for this week. But I don't know. She got to got, she gotta keep her guests fresh now. Because she started, you know, having people on her show that ain't nobody really heard of them. Or they, like, has been. I don't want to see all that. I want to see I want to see fresh new faces. I want to see people, you know, uh, get inspired or doing what they're doing and, and can talk about it and be smiling at the same damn time. See, that's what I want. But good job, Sherry Shepard. Uh, and we will see you again uh, tomorrow, Tuesday. I don't know who you're going to have as your guest, but we're going to be checking you out. We're going to be showing you love here over at the fam. Uh, Family affair over here. Dev Snell's 48th War Hurl, okay? And that's all I got. I ain't got no more, and I'll see y'all on the next video. Bye-bye.